Right, here we are inside of Cinema 4D 2023.1 uh, with the new pyro simulation. So, you probably have seen quite a few videos now that show this new simulation um, with smoke and fire and explosions and all that good stuff. Right, I'm not going to show that in this video. I'm going to be using pyro, but I'm going to be doing something different with pyro so um i will do the other ones at some point but i think there's quite a lot of those smoke and fire and stuff like that so i'm going to show you just something you can do different with it um which is quite interesting you, i don't know if you've seen this but what we're going to do is good um we're going to make like melting chocolate <laughs> sounds a bit weird because it's actually uh, for smoke and fire, but we're going to reverse engineer bits of this and, and I'm going to show you in a different way. Right, so we're going to start off with some text and let's just call this uh, If I can spell it be even better. Chocolate, there we go. So we're just going to do that and let's just make it a little bit thicker so we've got that. Um, I apologize if the if my microphone is picking up my chair because my chair is like one of these ones that relaxes back and it kind of squeaks quite a bit so I apologize if you can hear that all the way through this I'm going to try and keep still right so we've got the word chocolate and we're going to add the pyro tag so you go right click simulation tags pyro okay so straight out of the box if we just use it like this and we hit play we will get the word chocolate on fire okay and it works um, now that won't render, um, you've probably seen the other videos which have explained how you do this, but um, it, it doesn't render like this, this is using the GPU, um, it, it's super quick, I'll just show you quickly on here that it's it's on export, which means it's not actually re going to render at this point, you have to turn them on and then you have to use a redshift and you have to use a, a material and a volume pyro material to get this thing to render. Um, so we're going to go through those stages in a bit, but we're going to do something a bit different here. We're not going to use Redshift ultimately to render this. We're going to use the, um, the volume meshes. So I'll show you what I mean. What we do is we, um, we click on the, on the fire, uh, pyro tag here at the end. And just here, we want to take out, um, density, right? We don't want any smoke to, yeah, basically density is smoke and temperature is fire. If you if you look at it like that, then you'll you'll understand this plugin quite well. So we're going to take out the smoke, take out the density, and we're just going to use the temperature. Right. So if I just run that again, you'll see now that it's just using the fire. Okay. So what we need to do here is we go to this this tag. It's created this little menu, this pyro default menu here. We need to click on that. And we need to say on for temperature and then we're going to say off for density okay so if we just run that and it's only going to look at, at generating the temperature right so what we're going to do then we'll do something a bit different let's use a, a volume measure in this case okay and we're going to put the pyro default menu object there under the mesher okay and we're also going to turn off that now you'll see this very odd looking kind of word chocolate with kind of like it well, looks like bits of snow kind of stuck to it doesn't it you could use it like that but it's, it's really because the mesher's not um not got enough threshold now so we just need to bring this down look okay so it's at 50. If you bring it down somewhere around 20 or even a bit further, you'll get that. Now, I want to show you this running on the screen, but it doesn't work. I'll show you what happens if you just play it. You don't get anything. When you stop it, you get something. The reason for that is if you go to your, your um, project settings, which is Control and D on the keyboard, and then we go to Simulation, and then we go to Scene, just here that it says simulate before generators. We need to check that because then it will 
it will show you the simulation before things like the volume meshes and things like the generators work. Okay, so it will put it in the other order. So when you now look at it, you will see this happening. All right, so just make sure you check that and then you'll get this. So what, what it's doing is actually volume meshing the, um, the flames from the pyro tag, which is really fascinating because it's making a, a proper solid object here, right? The good news about this is we can render this in the standard render or the physical render. We don't have to do this through Redshift, which can take quite a considerable amount of time on the render time when it's doing the, the full flames and smoke. But for this, this chocolate effect, this melting chocolate effect, we're gonna, we're gonna use it like this. Okay, so what do we do now? We've got the word chocolate, but as you can see, it's going up like fire and smoke, right? We want it to come down and melt away. So quite simply, we're still in the right menu here, look. Gravity, which is under the simulation scene tag here look if we take the gravity and say let's take the minus off and just leave it at 981 in the other direction all right so now it will drop off there you see so there's not many things we need to do here to get this effect to work right so a few things when you look at this you go okay it's dropping but it's also disappearing at the same time Okay, and we want this to, if it's going to be like melting chocolate, it won't disappear. You know, like this is based on, on, on using fire and smoke. So the, the smoke and fire will go up a certain way and then it will dissipate and disappear. We want the chocolate to carry on. It doesn't disappear, does it? It, it will just keep building and building. So what we do, we go into the pyro default menu here on that little tag and we go to pyro, the one at the end. And th these are the main kind of system settings for Pyro. This is the, the, uh, like the, the kind of default overall um, settings, you know, not individual ones per, f per flame or per effect. This is the overall, whatever you call them. <laughs> it's everything in one here. Look. Um, but what we're looking for is dissipation just here. At the moment, you see, we have temperature which is what this is we're using if i just go back and show you we're using only temperature look which is enabled and density is not enabled right so we're only looking at temperature so if we go back to here we go to dissipation here where it says relative temperature dissipation is seven percent now if we zero that out it means it won't dissipate that's saying after 7% of this uh, flame, it would go up and then at 7% of that, it would then start to disappear. Now, if we zero that out at, um, at 0%, it shouldn't disappear at all. This is the theory, right? So this should kind of melt down like this and then it will just keep blobbing away like this, okay? So if we come back out, you'll see that it would, it's not disappearing. You know, like, like, a, like chocolate or something fluid like that, it, it wouldn't disappear, it would just keep going. Now, at the moment, it's not looking too bad. Let's just see if we can do anything else here. We've got smoothing. Now we've actually got smoothing because I've, I've used this before and it's, it's remembered my settings because We've got smoothing here at 100% on, which is fine. If we take that off, look, and play it, it's it's got it's not quite right. You see, it's really really kind of more like you know like flame and smoke would have these kind of settings. So what we're doing here is we're smoothing out the the effect. So like liquid chocolate, it would give you that very very kind of smooth look to everything. That okay. So you have to make sure that the temperature smoothing is on 100% and the temperature dissipation is at zero. And then it means that this will just keep kind of dropping down, keep producing and keep going and it won't disappear. Right, that's the first step. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna just put some 
kind of obstacles in the way for it to, for it to kind of cascade over. All right, so the first one is we'll just put in just a simple cube and just bring it down somewhere like that. Now, obviously, if I just run that, just wait for that to go. I'll have a sip of coffee while it's doing it. As you can see, there's a slight issue. It's going straight through the box. So what do we do? Now, this system works with the new simulation system because it's in the same tag. If you have a look, if we, uh, if we um, click on the cube and we right click and we go to simulation tags, you'll see that we've got pyro and pyro fuel is all in this simulation tags here with balloon, collider, rope, everything. So it's all using the same particle run system here. So we can use any of these and they'll all work together, right? Now if you imagine that you've got rope and cloth and balloon and smoke and fire and liquid style effects like I'm showing here, all combined into one simulation menu. There are so many types of in, um, simulations and scenes that we can set up here now. It, it's, it's getting really good. <laughs> and then I think water is going to be added soon as well, which will be based again on this same kind of particle system. Fingers crossed for that one coming out soon. Um, anyway, what I was going to say was we use a simulation tag on the cube and we just put a collider on it. Okay, so we're saying now that this smoke, this which is now going to be liquid in this case, is going to collide with objects that we put in the way. So if we try that again, let's wait for that to come to there and you'll see that now look, and let's just pause it there a second, move this round so you, you can really start to see. Let's take out the um, work plane so you can see this without the um, uh, grid getting in the way and now look at that it's just and we could obviously smooth this out even further by putting it in a subdivision surface <clears throat> but it's just that kind of looking at this a different way you know not looking at it as smoke turn it round smooth it out drop the gravity the other way and then you start to get this really interesting effect you know which could almost be water you know the way that's doing but look that absolutely lovely the way it's doing this and then if we just get ourselves a let's just have a look we just we're just going to grab just a we just want a chocolate color why can't i make a chocolate color i made one earlier i should be able to make one now there we go something like that and let's let's dial up the Take the roughness down, let's have a bit of shine on this really little milky kind of liquid chocolate there. And we put that on the volume measure. Oh, <coughs> excuse me. Wow, I'm not sure that's chocolate. <laughs> shall we uh, let's get a little bit of a different colour going on, shall we? Let's make it nice and rich and maybe a bit darker chocolate, something like that. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> right also let's um let's put a nice background color in let's set the scene a little here let's put in a i don't know let's put a nice really lovely rich purple kind of color in here and let's bring that up so it's nice and dark right and <clears throat> let's also make another texture another material sorry and right, let's first of all let's go to background let's grab that right click and copy that color let's go to our new one and let's take off the reflectance and let's right click and paste that color in there now let's add that to the cube <coughs> excuse me um <clears throat> let's have another sip of coffee i always seem to get a cough when i do a lot of talking okay all right, so if we just do a quick render, we should see, that's fine, we've got some purple, right, so let's just add a, let's just add a light to this. I like to use, um, <clears throat> like, a, let's just try a sunlight, but let's, 
take let's take the color actually let's put a let's put a physical sky in but not use the sky and then on the sun let's just change that to white okay so now we've got a little bit of control here if we change the time here to whatever's going to look right and also um, on the sun let's dial that up to about 200 let's get a little bit more brightness <coughs> excuse me um, that's a little bit a little bit shiny but you get the idea you get the idea that that is chocolate kind of dripping nicely down and cascading all over the edge of the uh, of that little scene okay so if we just render that that it really depends we're getting quite a lot of shadows on here i think we need to um kind of you know turn these lights around a little you just play around with the lights until you get something that's not completely you know we, we might have a little bit too much shine going on here as well <coughs> excuse me oh some of the specular's too high so let's give that a go not too bad okay so the idea here is <coughs> we can in we can interact with collisions within this flow like we have done on the box now the other one that you've seen in the in the video is to put a little marshmallow in okay so we can do that and we can let's go to caps and little fillet round that off and then if we get a cube and then the cube we put in about 10 by 10 like that and make this about 400 <clears throat> and there we have if we just group those in, a, in a, a null and call that marshmallow and then we can just <coughs> spin that round and the idea here is like a, a nice chocolate fountain we can actually just move this um, marshmallow stick around in this chocolate and it will flow around it as long as we put a colliders hang on so we've got one on the cube let's just copy that one over onto uh, actually we need to put it on we can't put it on the um, <clears throat> the null we have to put it on these actual individual items here so we put it on the the stick and the marshmallow itself okay now if we just run this simulation let's just put this let's just put it down and then let's run it and you'll see that it will just it will drip round here and if we just grab this look and this is in the live view yeah we can interact that um, marshmallow with with the chocolate um, and the way I like to do this to make that move on its own is to right click animation tags vibrate okay so we can change the position and rotation of this item and we can say let's just put one in there let's just try a few settings here see what happens you have to fine-tune these sometimes but let's just see if that is about right so we start here see the stick will then move around on its own okay like it's dipping in for some for some chocolate it's actually hitting into here um, because the reason it's hit in there let's lift it up because the reason is they're both colliders one of them isn't like a solid object we don't need it to be in this case so we could just we could just kind of lift it clear of that for this for this particular simulation is to see if we've got that in the right place that's not too bad it might go in further yeah okay we could just go in a little bit further like it's just dipping in just a little bit more to so it's really interrupting the flow of this going around it so it's really just to show you the yeah you know, the way the simulation system works here is we we can use this in a liquid style form um, and we can 
we can collide it with any other object. You know, here we've got a collider um, cube, which is all cascading over, and we've also got the marshmallow that we can kind of dip in there and collide with. So really nice effect. Um, you can use this, you could use it, you could do a waterfall, you could have rocks jutting through the waterfall, and then this would cascade through, and then the rocks, and it would go round the rock. So it's it's a good workaround at the moment until we get the full water system in here, you know, to be able to just use this in a completely different way. Now, I am going to look at some really nice smoke and coloured smoke um, techniques in another video that I've got coming up. I really do like some of the way this smoke changes as it passes through a, a, other other objects that you can assign different effects to. So I will do that very, very soon after this video um, because I've got some really good ideas for that. So I hope you've enjoyed this one. Make all sorts of liquidy style things using pyro. Um, have a bit of fun with it. You know, I just came up with this a couple of days ago. Just, just thought, you know, if we turn the gravity around and we smooth things out, what can we get? This is the result. I hope you enjoy it. My name is Mike German from Visual Animation. Speak soon. Take care. Goodbye for now.